Thank you for coming. So, my name is Sabir, and I direct events here at Strain. For a little bit of history, Strain was founded in 1927 by the Bass family over on 4th Avenue's Book Row. Stretching from Union Square to Astor Place, Book Row gradually dwindled until after over 91 years, Strand is the sole survivor, still run by the Bass family, and still housing new and used books. Tonight, I am very excited to welcome writer, model, and designer Susan Holmes McKagan for the launch of her book, The Velvet Rose. Susan is a well-known, experienced, and credentialed writer. Her columns regularly appear on the coveted front page cover stories for the Huffington Post and Pop Wrapped. She also happens to be an international supermodel, having graced covers for Vogue, Glamour, Cosmopolitan, Marie Claire, W, Playboy, and Maxim, to name a few. Joining Susan is former model, author, coach, and TV personality, Jay Alexander. Jay Alexander, affectionately known as Miss Jay and possibly most known for his role on America's Next Top Model, is a cultural pioneer. Having carved out his own lane to succeed in fashion, entertainment, and business, Miss J has become a glamorous fixture in model artistry, an inspiration to the LGBTQ community, and an innovative icon to fans worldwide. Without further ado, please join me in welcoming Susan and Miss J to Strand. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know why they keep giving these big old black things so close to my mouth. <laughs> I, don't to, I, don't, I don't know what I'm supposed to do with it. <laughs> Sorry. Hi, everybody. This is not about me today. It's about her. That's what you think, Miss J. And this is my first time ever in my entire life moderating anything. So get ready, baby. <laughs> and I have no filter, let's, so let's be clear. <laughs> What's on my mind is on my tongue. I say it as I see it. So Susan, oh, okay, wait a minute. Oh. Dear invited guests, please turn off all cell phones. <laughs> Thank you. Unless it's your dealer. <laughs> a hot date, <laughs> or your lawyer. So anyway, um, Susan is one of my third students that I've ever taught how to walk down the catwalk. And um, I'm very honored that she did ask me to uh, come here today and moderate her book called The Velvet Rose. Um, Dealing with uh, the Notre Dame's burning down, I had time on the airplane, because I'm just arriving from Paris, uh, to go through some of the notes. So what you see here, tagged in colors, is actually here on paper. So I did kind of go through it, okay? Boop! <laughs> so, Susan, you have tackled a lot since we met in the early 90s. So from Supermodel, to rock a wife, to mom, swimwear designer, and now authoress. And the book takes us on a, a, a little bit of a journey, actually, through your life. But there's a few things I'll be asking you about as we go through this book tonight. So, Susan, uh, tell us a little bit about the book. Thanks, Ms. J. Mm -hmm. And thanks for being here. And thanks, all of you, for being here. I really appreciate it. Um, OK, well, the book takes place in the early 90s, and oftentimes in New York City, one of my favorite cities. And it's a coming of age story. You said a coming out story? <laughs> hmm, I don't know. You just have to read the book, Ms. J. Uh, I, I was going to say, because I didn't see that part when I was reading it. <laughs> OK, I'm just being clear. <laughs> Well, there might be a little bit of that Ooh. and coming of age. Okay. It's very mm. colorful and mm. full of love. So, um, yeah, so the characters in the book are young. They're in their, you know, early 20s, and it's, um, 
it's got a lead female protagonist, and her name is Scarlett, and she's a model and a painter, and she finds herself traveling to some of the most infamous fashion capitals in the world. So it's filled with lots of fun travel and journeys and adventure. And then Scarlett uh, then meets Johnny of uh, the rock band The Westies, and <laughs> wink, and, um, <laughs> and uh, then what ensues is a you know, unhinged ride of sort of everything from fame, addiction, infidelity, and all the ups and downs of dating a legendary rock and roller. And the rest is, uh, I, I don't want to give too much away, but well, I mean, kind of goes from so there. Well, I mean, so Scarlet sounds a bit like... <laughs> you better p pick out that, put out the uh, now, pillow, baby. SJ. Now, baby. Where's your pillow? You're going to get the <clears> dense cat. <throat> That's going to be my cue when I hear you talking. <laughs> Something you'd like to ask before we get started? What are you asking, baby? What, what, you, you sure? I mean, no, look, talk to me. Talk to me. You, you sure? I mean, because I don't want you to lose your train of thought here. You sure? You, you, okay, you good? Okay, baby. Anyway. Um, Anywho. Yes, yeah, so, and to, and to who? So, Susan, is Scarlett somewhat the person that I met in the 90s? Yeah, I would say um, there's definitely a semblance a little bit about myself. They say, right, what you know about and the experiences you've felt and things you've, you know, just been through. And I'm blessed and lucky. I've gotten to see and do a lot in my life from, you know, meeting all kinds of wonderful people and working in, you know, this wonderful community and fashion and music. And I'm making it sound really tame right now, but believe you me, it is not. So there's just a lot to unfold, and I think it's um, a riveting story, and I think it's very relatable to a lot of people, especially those who perhaps have had the courage to go out and sort of champion um, an unconventional path, you know, whether it's writing a book or being a model or a musician or working in a bookshop, you know, we've all had to kind of stick outside of our own comfort zone and go through some shit. So, <laughs> well, kind of so some deals of the shit with that. that you've gone through. <laughs> how did you actually start? I mean, I don't know if anyone knows that you started your career as a model. How did that all come about? Oh, okay. Hmm. Well, I'm, I'm bouncing around the book, guys, so you can need to buy the book to get the real details. Go ahead, baby. Okay. Well, let's see. Um, initially I was modeling locally in San Diego. And um, then I got to come to a trip to New York City. I was so excited. I had an aunt who lived in New Jersey at the time. And so my mom and I um, got to do a special mother-daughter trip. And we went and treated ourselves to this nice uh, meal at this restaurant. It's called the Quilted Giraffe. And there's just a few tables there. And afterwards, we we're going to check out a Broadway musical and see Cats at the Winter Garden Theater, <laughs> which I think, is it still going on? Or, I think it's or did it just Wait, like cats stop, went to Garden Theater. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, it's been going on forever. Okay. Anyways, um, yeah. it's a really good one. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't had a chance to see it by now. Yeah. Um, so we were at the restaurant, and I don't know, I got up to go use the restroom, and it was kind of dark, but I guess the table nearest saw that I was this tall, gangly girl and young, and. And um, the photographer said, excuse me, are you a model? Um, I think you should really go and um, try it. Um, go see Eileen Ford tomorrow morning um, and say that I sent you. And um, the waiter came over and he's like, do you know who that is? And I was like, no. And he's like, that's Jodie Foster and um, this photographer named Marco Glaviano. So I was like, oh, wow, OK. Um, he must be legit or something. So, <laughs> so Needless to say, that my mother and I then went the next morning to see Eileen, so. Okay, so as you went through your career and you, you know, you're living in Paris, you've been traveling a lot. Um, when you met Johnny, 
Uh, did you think you needed someone sort of to help you balance your life between all the traveling and the modeling and being, being a bit lonely? So when you say Johnny, for those who ha haven't had a chance to read the book, because I know it just came out today, <laughs> the lead uh, male character in the book's named Johnny. And um, so Scarlett and Johnny end up meeting up and for sure, he, um, yeah, they um, definitely. Uh, Pre-Tinder and. Right, yeah, pre-Tinder, okay. Bumble. Okay. Um, in fact, in the 90s is when it was made public, the World Wide Web was out. So this is in those days and times, no cell phones. And it was just an organic, true, beautiful love story. And they definitely completed one another, but they were still trying to figure their way out in the world, of course, and making a ton of mistakes, mm -hmm. as one does. So when did you decide to write the book? When did you decide? Um, okay, well, initially I was lucky because my darling husband, Duff, who's over there right now. <laughs> um, Everyone on that side Yes, he's over here. He's over here. Okay. And, um, he had just completed writing his book, and so I was on his, you know, along his sidelines, and I got to witness him um, go through the creative process, and it was tremendously inspiring. And he had written for ESPN and various columns, Seattle Weekly and Playboy, and so I saw how he went through the, you know, machinations to go from writing columns to then, you know, trying his hand at writing a book. So I, um, while he was writing his book, someone at his uh, publishing house was like, you know, you should really write a book. And I was like, me? I, I don't know how to write. Are you kidding me? And she's like, I can tell you're filled with lots of great stories and characters, and you have it in you. You should do it. And I said, well, um, OK, thank you. That's very kind of you to think of that. And so um, and this, this is the woman that worked on The Devil Wears Prada, the book and film. So also had some levity <laughs> and um, intelligent, uh, bright woman. And um, so then I started writing columns and for the Huffington Post and um, pop wrapped and had a lot of fun with it. And I've always enjoyed having a creative outlet. And um, it was a little bit more cohesive with my lifestyle, being on the road and on rock and roll tours and with kids, because I used to fall asleep at night counting swimsuits you know, in my head with the inventory and not making it to a certain trade show or, you know, because I'd be on the road or, you know, so it just was kind of more fitting with my lifestyle too. Okay. So now that we have A Star is Born, we have Bohemian Rhapsody, we have the new Elton John, the Sex Pistols, do you think this book would be an easy translation to go into film? Hmm. Well, it certainly is a hot topic, right? Um, mm -hmm. People love... Um, rock and roll stories, they just like human stories, I think, or, you know, seeing um, sort of the triumphs and overcoming them. And um, I think, I mean, obviously initially, I just, I'm surprised I'm sitting here right now talking about a book I wrote, so um, I can't even think about that, but I know I've been approached and, and, and uh, I think it would make for a compelling story, you know, a translation to, possibly a, f a film or um, maybe a Netflix thing or something. But again, I'm just honored and feel so tremendously happy I'm here just sitting here with this book. Like, I, it took me nine years to finish this. So. Girl, <laughs> well, it's, it's, I mean. <laughs> nine years to write this book. Nine years. Well, let me talk about me for a little bit. My book, it took me a year and a half. I would take one hour to talk about my mother, my father, my sister, my brother coming out, cross-dressing, dressing in drag, fighting people, beating people up in the Bronx, um, fighting my way through the streets of Paris and living in Japan. And it was the putting it together was a lot of work. Because what it did do, I don't know if it did it for you, but it brought up a lot of emotions, different emotions, people that you liked and who you wanted to be in the book. And I can't wait to do your documentary because you're going to do mine. Yes. 
Yes, you, make, so you, you all make, heard it here. Yes, you got to make sure so you pull out the right people to be a part of your book as you're writing it. I can't wait to see your documentary. Yeah, but wait till they read your book and they can talk about me after. Oh, so, okay. okay. So anyway, <laughs> the, the Westies. So let's talk a little bit about the Westies. Okay. Where, how, and why? Okay, so the Westies are the rock and roll band on the cusp of superstardom in the book. And the book is called The Velvet Rose. I'm, you know, there is some semblance to Velvet Revolver and Guns N' Roses. Oh. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> A little Ramona Clay, oh, isn't that if special? you will. <laughs> um, so I think it was kind of fun and important to demonstrate in this time, because it was in the 90s, and there was some great music, but it was starting to shift, and it, and it was getting a little bit less rock and roll, and a little more, sorry if there's any Michael Bolton fans, but it was getting a little more in that direction. So, um, to each his own. And I thought it was fun to show the struggle with the artistry as well, in that time period. And for all the, those of you that love music, rock and roll, real drum machines, things like that, you're gonna love it, so. So if they do a film based on this book, who would you get to play you? Or well, Scarlett, shall you. I say? You. Blonde wig. Ciao. Well, me there are some me runway to, scenes. Me trying to play a so. white woman. Yes. That would be absolutely just fucking fantastic, wouldn't it? I be amazing. Get, I get to pull that one off. Miss J as a white woman. That would be absolutely amazing. Blonde. Okay. And who would play... Um, oh, you're yeah. going to like this. Who would play Johnny? Yeah. Your love interest? Brad yes. Pitt. Baby, let's be clear. <laughs> Brad Pitt can handle all this. <laughs> uh-uh. This is too much. This is too much. This is all too much of Brad Pitt, baby. It's a brainstorm. Uh, I talk about a casting couch. <laughs> Just have fun casting, wouldn't we? We okay. have to have them do 90s runway walk first and foremost. I think well, there'll that. be a few prerequisites, of, of course, for that. But I mean, we all are excited for you. We're very excited about the book. And um, did you ever think, you know, that you would sit down and be speaking to hundreds of people, you know, about a book that you've written, loosely based on your life and your trials and tribulations, your ups and downs, and your sideways,es and everything else in between? I mean, it is a question I'm going to ask. How come a model never marries the garbage man or the woman? <laughs> Why do they marry the damn rock and roll stars and the musicians, uh, the sports figures, the actors? That's a good question. Because the garbage man could put that, she could put that, he could put it down, baby. He could do a pound and honey. <laughs> baby, the guy delivering the groceries. <laughs> I'm sure he can. <laughs> Just saying, oh, grrr. <laughs> so um, I'm waiting for me to get my five minute sign because I'm sure you may want to ask a few questions because I can go on here all day because there's a lot of things in this book, but I want to get too much about it away because I had a long flight, so it was easy for me to kind of go through it. And knowing you and talking to you before having the book, um, we all are very, very happy for you. We're thrilled to death for you. Thank you. You have raised. You've, you've gone through some stuff, because I know some stuff you've gone through, and you've come on top, and I'm very proud of you for that. Um, I also, you've raised fabulous, beautiful daughters. I mean, creative yeah. girls. Yeah. Um, yeah. Your husband, I'm slightly in love with, so it's between, <laughs> it'll, be, it'll be a fight between Dave Grohl and him who would get, you know, because, you know, Dave, you know, me and Dave Grohl. Dave go, likes you, I know. I know, so it's going to be a battle between Duffy Keegan and Dave Grohl to get some of Miss J's. Mm -hmm. 
<laughs> and um, I think the best thing about it is too is that your husband is very, very supportive. Duff is very supportive with you in every single way. Um, and as I said, it's between you and, and Claudia Mason and Megan and Heather Sir White, Patricia Hartman, all you girls have been responsible for my career and helping me, you know, prove that this tall black man from the South Bronx running around, walking around in a pair of high heels and panties can get the job done. <laughs> but again, I had no problems being me. I've always been me. And um, part of being me is helping people just be themselves. And it allowed me to be who I am. It has allowed me to remain friends with you girls for so long because we all have been real. I mean, like real, down to earth, cry, tell the business, talk smack, talk shit, talk good stuff, bad stuff, be fierce, be fabulous. And I think it's a great thing that it's in your book, um, The Velvet Rose, um, and the people are gonna learn a lot about you through the characters that they probably would never ask, or never thought about, and I think it's, it's brilliant, and congratulations. Thank you. Love you, Miss J. Yeah. I just want to keep it brief because I hate long things like this. It makes me crazy. I'm jet lagged, I'm hungry, I'm irritable. And I'm gonna let you guys answer some questions and I'm gonna let you take it over from here, okay? Oh, actually. Are you gonna read first? I'm just gonna read a brief excerpt, that's okay. Of course, girl, look, this is is about you, it's not about me. All right, all right. It's your book. To let you know, this is, um, this is the part in the book, it drops in, for any of you who've had the pleasure of living here in New York City, particularly in the 90s clubs era. Um, and it also mentions um, two of the band members from the Westies, and their names are Hawk and Johnny. So if you hear those names, they're the members of the band. And keep in mind, they're in their young 20s. <laughs> Okay, here we go. Rock and Doll, 1995. Nothing was what it seemed, and no one desired it to be. Adventuring from the street into the club gave the sensation of stepping into a music video that had been art directed to the hilt. Skateboarders executed ollies around them, adding to the bedlam of maximum velocity and volume. Voracious wind machines distorted Hawk's raggedy hair into a rat's nest as he tried and failed to act casual. Johnny laughed, dug his elbow into his guitarist's ribs, his own inky black pompadour indifferent to the elements. The thundering dance beat kicked them in the heart with its insistent percussive power. Lights splashed sweet tart hues across their skin Baby blue stars and pale yellow circles distorted their faces and the visages of those around them. The insatiable club goers, all bare, sweaty flesh, compressed tighter than a midtown subway car at rush hour. Outlandish figures emerged from the flashing lights, then faded back into the darkness. Johnny and his cohorts liked to start their night here at the tunnel a New York City night spot known for its uncensored vibe, eclectic music, and melting pot scene. The cavernous main room offered a packed, sunken dance floor and several airborne cages in which saucy go-go boys and girls in short shorts gyrated above the manic crowd below. They usually did a few laps through the club with their birds, also known as their babes, winnowing their way through the Lava Lounge, designed by IT artist Kenny Scharf. And then past the infamous unisex bathrooms and into the hip hop portion of the club, nodding hello to some of the well-known regulars, Ice Cube, Billy Idol, and Marky Mark. The night was young. They had only consumed a few celebratory shots of Jack so far. But as they settled into the tunnel's rock and roll area, it was possible to get high on the room alone. With its joyous inclusiveness and high octane, anything goes vibe, it was freedom personified. They loved New York, 
They felt right at home. And tonight, Johnny was flying. He had experienced the culmination of his childhood dreams, the decade of hard work in which he had literally played guitar until his fingers bled, and his courageous de decision, sorry, to leave home and strike out for the city. It had all finally paid off. And drum roll, please. He had just signed a motherfucking record contract with MCA Records. And that's when she said, let's get married. Well, on that note, um, questions? Anyone has any questions? I mean, we have time for a few. Don't be shy. And if you just want to line up down this aisle by this microphone to ask the questions, just since we're recording. Don't be and shy. This is the part that I hate. <laughs> because you know they want to ask some goddamn questions and sit back here waiting for the first one to get up there and say something. And making me mad. Come on now. Hi. Do you need a mic? I have a mic. Are you, OK. Can you hear me now? Hi. Hi, how are you? Very well, thanks. How are my you? My husband has such a crush on you. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a little jealous, but I have a crush on your husband, so I guess we're even. That's all I wanted to say. You did a great job. Thank you so much. Well, thank you, I think. Thank you, yeah. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> have a seat. You did a great job. <laughs> I'm giving up the seat. If you want to get all up in a... <laughs> You want to get all up in a coochie now, baby? Go right ahead, honey. I'm look. There's plenty of room in the back. This is an old building, and the walls are pretty damn thick. Well, all right, okay. Mm, 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 mm. And, Hi guys. And your husband is quite cute, by the way. <laughs> and a really nice smile. The, the, the smile Great just kills smile? me. The smile yeah. kills you. The smile right. is everything. Baby. Yeah, they both do. <laughs> We're both winners, right? We, yes. Yeah. Look at my oh, wife's smile. Geez. Crest white strips, though. So I have, white. I admit it. Yeah. I have, I have. Um, just quick, Miss J, my daughter, when we were, she was in her like 12, 11, we watched America's Top Model. My daughter loves you. She's 23 now, and she said to say hi. Okay. <laughs> hi. Um, <laughs> so my question, Susan, is similar length in marriage, 23-year-old um, daughter, Regular guy, I can't even like find time to do the grocery shopping sometimes. Never mind, travel around the world, write a book, be a model. How do you guys like pull all this yeah. off? <laughs> like I said, nine years, baby. Wow. I think I'm one of the only people. I think I met another author. It took him seven years, so we were in a similar club. But it's not a race. It's you know, it's just enjoying the whole process and the journey and. I think sometimes when things do take longer, the reward is higher. And just believe in yourself. And, you know, every day I make a checklist, and if I cross off maybe half of that, I'm doing good. That's what works for me. Mm. Did you find yourself second guessing yourself when you were writing, like going back and a lot of that? Or did you just, it kind of flowed? Um, yeah, of course, especially because it's my first mm. book. Um, and so everyone's writing style is different. For me, I just blah, I just write whatever comes to mind create, creatively because then I feel like it doesn't hinder anywhere and then I sleep on it. And then the next day on Duff's really strong coffee, I go back <laughs> <laughs> and I read through it again because you read through it for, through it, uh, a new paradigm after you've slept on it. Mm. And and I cross out a lot and I rewrite a lot and then I let as many people as I can think of read it and give me their opinions. And I love constructive criticism because I'm new at this, relatively new at this. So um, yeah, so I think you're doing great though. It sounds like you're doing wonderful. Congrats on your long marriage too. Yeah, 29 years. Oh my gosh, that's incredible. I love that. So when you, so when you Sleep on See, you, you inspire us. <laughs> hey, Sue. Hey. Uh, I actually had questions also about the craft of writing specifically. You've answered some of it, but I was curious about other points along the nine years where you changed tack or important things that, that added to your writing. Sure. Um, 
I changed so much and I rewrote so much because I had a lot of feedback and I was lucky, I had a wonderful team. And um, uh, also for me, I learned a lot because writing a novel, as you know, <laughs> um, is uh, completely different than an autobiography or a biography. So in a novel, it has to take place in a 12 month period typically, and you have to get that beginning, middle, and end in there in, you know, in the, the arc in the story and everything, and still make it cohesive and page turning and compelling. So for me, I just really worked on a very, very strong outline and um, finessed it from there. And my lit agent, who's here tonight, Kirsten at Foundry, was amazing. She had a lot of help for me as well. And she had me bring the uh, lead female protagonist, Scarlett's character. She made her a bit younger um, and then only go, um, it went from 93 to 1995, from chapter one to chapter two, and then from there it just is all from 95 in that one year because I just had too much material. And that was my problem for me personally as a writer was being more concise. I had too much material, so I have, Lots of stuff still for another book, I guess, or something, or <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Hi, I have Hi. a question. Congratulations, first of all, on the book coming out. Um, Thank you. I wanted to address the garbage man rock star thing, first of all, <laughs> because yes. a, a woman uh, who's a, a rock icon that, I, that I'm friends with dated a garbage man. So. Yes, I love So her. maybe it's like maybe rock women are cool with dating. I don't know. Um, so, so was the male real. dating the female garbage collector no, or vice the, the, versa? The, 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 the woman was dating, okay. cho chose to date a garbage man. Good on her. Yes. That's cool. Yeah, yeah she was cool. Uh, my question was, when you're writing fiction, did you ever have the urge to, I mean, so it's based on things that happened to you, but did you ever have the urge to change, to sort of, tell a story that you wish happened or, or sort of play a what if game? Like, well, you know, what if, you know what I mean? Did you find yourself in that position? Uh, oh, uh, or or to, what was sort of driving your... Yeah, I, I mean, there's definitely some true stuff in here, but I blended uh, characters and storylines um, because at the end of the day, the most imperative thing for me was to, I figured for anyone to take the time to like buy the book have time to read a whole book in this day and age, it better be really darn compelling and riveting and um, inspiring. And also it's a fun book. I mean, it's injected with humor. There's a lot of sort of that spinal tap stuff in there. These, these kids are trying to figure out their way in life, their path, and you're on their journey with them and you're rooting for them and sometimes you're not. And of course there's a villain and um, I just want it to be entertaining and it's almost like a form of escapism. I think mm. there's a lot of brilliant books out there, of course, you know, and these like war-torn things, and that's great, but maybe you wanna mix in a light one in between the two really bleak ones. This is a good one. <laughs> well, thanks. <laughs> Hello, Hi. I'm, I'm Duff McKagan. How, how are you doing? Hi, handsome, so, how are you? I'm so happy to be here tonight. Are you I'm so happy you're here. So I, my, my, my question was this. Fancy supermodel, successful swimwear designer. You know a lot of fancy people. You wrote for the Huffington Post, pop rap, these successful columns. You got a book deal just like that, right? First, first uh, draft you put in, you got a book deal right away, didn't you? Just Hells right away. to oh. the no. no. There was so much rejection, you guys. A lot. And... Um, and through modeling, actually, a lot of times people think, oh, models, you're very, you know, full of yourselves. I, I'd like to say quite the contrary, because for every job we get, there's probably, you know, at least 20 jobs we didn't. And we went on go sees and we thought we had it or we were the special one. But truth is, like, every single model is beautiful, of course, in their own way. It's Since subjective. You are the special so, one. Well, after you, Miss J, but thank you. You make me feel special, so that's... Nice, thank you. It's true. Anyways, um, so I dealt with tons and tons of rejection and I had to rewrite a lot and I could have given up and said, 
okay, I don't even know what I was thinking. And I actually did for uh, like a year, I think I put it to rest and just thought, okay, I'm not good enough, it's fine, it's okay. <laughs> it's good enough for me, um, but I just kept believing in myself and I, for instance, I sent it out, we did a soft pitch um, to some publishers to get a little feedback and initially they were like, okay, it's really great. I like the, the characters and I'm just not feeling enough 90s in there. So I need to hear more, you know, Doc Martens and Blockbuster Video. <laughs> so I went back to the drawing board and I peppered it up with, you know, this and that. And then we sent out for the next pitch. And the first thing out of the next person's mouth was, I think it's really great and stuff, but it's just way too on the money with the 90s stuff. <laughs> <laughs> There's no right or wrong, just believe in yourself. I think what J.K. Rowling got rejected 45 times for Harry Potter, and there's many, many more other, so it's not about that. It's just keep trying, keep going at it. Thank you very much for answering my question. <laughs> Hi, my name is Natalia. I actually did have a question about the rejection, but that's been already asked just by Duff. So thank you very much, though. That was an excellent question and answer. So um, I don't have a question right now, but... <laughs> okay. You look but, great. You're here. Thanks for coming. <laughs> of course. What I just, books are you reading right now? Anything interesting? Um, actually, that is a... I'm from Russia, so the last one right now, I'm reading a Ruski. Russian, yep, Ruski. Ruski. <laughs> <laughs> mm. I'm just reading this uh, Russian author that is a book uh, technically also about the historical facts about the um, World War II, and it was such thing in Russia that called Gulag. It's so, sort of um, sort of like the same as the Holocaust, only for your own people. So it's very intense and very interesting, and I hope they will translate that into English one yes. day. And that was the other thing that was great about, and I'm sorry to hear that. I want to read that book. Who's the author? Um, it, her name is Zuleha. She's not very famous writer there. It's her first or second book right now, yeah. but she's coming out because that it, that is a fictional book, but it's very historically right, right, and it's very intense to read. So maybe Sounds in the future. Sounds very interesting. And yeah. I have Lithuanian in me, so oh. part of my ancestry <laughs> was part of that. So I can appreciate that. That is awesome. Well, um, I don't have a question, but I actually wanted to just, guys, um, thank you both, because as I'm from Russia, I was a young girl in the 90s, so it was very popular on the supermodels and magazines. I read everything about you. I read everything about all the models. And just to, you know, kind of like the courage to keep going and doing made me want to just moved to New York at the age of 21 by myself. So I did that, not without, you know, thinking um, all that I've read and the courage that you can do if you want to really achieve something. And then to know that you are with, you know, Duff, that you guys are a superpower couple, um, that makes me just really, really happy. And I just want to say thank you, and I love you, and thank you for existing. <laughs> thank you for existing. <laughs> Jimmy, hey. ladies and gentlemen, Jimmy Webb. <laughs> well, let me start right here. Hey, Jimmy. Uh -huh. Thank you. I mean, they bloom as gorgeous as you are. Thank you. Oh, Jimmy's making me blush like a white oh. woman. Stop. <laughs> oh, Jimmy. Yeah. First of all, Jimmy. Jay, you are so lovely. And you are so intense, more lovely in person than you are on camera, and more intense and so sincere. It's absolutely magical. And this was perfect. You know, I had lunch with Susan, and it was right after seeing the video of you two doing the walk around the Russian tea room. <laughs> and she told me she was going to ask you to do this, and I was like, yes, yes, just perfect, yes. perfect. Well, it was, and it uh, was. Match made in heaven, yeah. and I'm glad I was able to make it. Perfect. And so New York. Yeah. Susan, oh my God, I'm so proud of you. And I don't read anymore, because I just don't have, I can read. It'll uh, be on Audible. Uh, um, it'll, it'll be on audiobooks. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Audible. Yeah. No, I want to read. Oh, okay. I want to turn the pages so they're dirty, okay. you know? But you know Punk what I mean? Rock. <laughs> <Love it. laughs> to listen to you describe things, 
is absolutely wonderful. And you know, when we were at lunch the day you told me about Jay, I said, how did you become Susan Holmes McKagan? Because sometimes you don't get to ask the question. And it was exactly like Scarlet, or the essence of Scarlet. So to know you were so honest with us makes me only want to dig into the book more. You know, and to watch you talk about the club scene, I'm old, I'm 70s, so it was like when I was dancing to Donna Summer, you know, when you were describing, but I'm a total rock and roll boy, magical. You described the magic of the era of New York so eloquently, beautifully, and honestly, as you are. And I just want to end with this, watching you be a mother, and watching you be a wife, and I thank that person that told you to write this book, and your two lovely daughters blossom and bloom, one of who's here, and you just do it all and jump on a plane and do this and that and make dinner and blah, 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 and a swimsuit designer, kick ass. You are an inspiration to the world, and you do it be with beauty, style, and class, and I'm honored to be your friend and look at you like this. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Well said, well said, well said. See, I do the same thing as a prostitute and I don't get that praise. <laughs> That's some shit. Anyway. <laughs> Jimmy, you got some friends? Some cute friends? <laughs> You're wooing us over here. Our hearts are melting. Hi. Hi. Who can follow that? Uh, <laughs> exactly. <Wow. laughs> So Susan, it's so good to see you. Actually, Susan and I met when I carried her, um, bought her swimsuit line for Victoria's Secret. So that's come up today too. Yeah, it's so good to see you. Yeah, thanks and for coming. Absolutely. I don't think you're really gonna come. You know, people are like, yeah, yeah. I know, but I say no. when I do something, I do it. <laughs> you should know it's that. It's true, you do it. follow through. I do follow Thank through. Thank you. So I'm happy to see you. I can't wait to read the book. And you know, I think my question is really, you know, you spent nine years doing this, obviously very reflective. I'm probably not close enough to this. Oh, yeah. So nine years writing a book, incredibly reflective. You have daughters. What would you go back and wish you could have told your younger self? Mm. Or you would tell your daughters and know that they would actually listen to you on that advice? OK, that's a really good question. And my husband's going to vouch for this, because I still do it to this day. So maybe by saying it out loud, it'll resonate in my brain a little bit more. Mm. Um, I think for me personally, I have a hard time um, with the inner voice in my head. Mm. So it's I good. think sometimes it's hard mm -hmm. to feel strength and um, like not beat yourself up, you know? Right. And just have a strong um, love for yourself because your emotions are a lot stronger. Um, Which yours right on the edge right now. <sighs> yeah, I, they I really do change your outlook on life. And um, you should just focus on gratitude and all the wonderful blessings you have. And sometimes you just get caught up in all that stupid stuff. And so you know, true. we're here today, all of us. We're, we woke up this morning, we're here. It was a good day. It only rained a little bit. You know, we're in a beautiful bookstore that's been around since 1927. Yeah, it's and still here, sick. selling a lot of books. Damn, I'm old in this bookstore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Don't let the owner hear you say that. <laughs> Anyways, just be, I just think believe in yourself more. And I know that sounds kind of cheesy, but for me, my personal thing, my husband always tells me, he's like, hey, you always go to the dark side. <laughs> Like, just believe in yourself, be positive. You have to, you know, so I would tell Scarlett and my daughters, just, you know, do you. And there is no right or wrong. Everybody's path's different, you know? So I, that's for me personally. Mm -hmm. So at what point in your life do you think you started to hit, listen to your inner voice? I still work on this every yeah. single day. A lot of us do. <laughs> <laughs> I, I still haven't championed that. It's, it's something I battle with, and um, it's important to me, not just for myself, but because I have two daughters, and it's a different world. And they're working so hard to you know, make it through and on, on their own 
you know, my daughter May's here. She's going to school full time. Mm -hmm. She's modeling on the weekends, and then she's coming out with her own clothing line, and she's working her butt off, and I'm really proud of her. And then my other daughter's, you know, working a lot and touring and writing her songs, and it's, I just want them to feel proud of themselves instead of, like, comparing themselves to everyone else. Good advice. <laughs> Thank you, and so good to see you. Thank you. Good to see you. Hello. Hi, BK. Hi. I was just walking by, and I saw there was a book event. So I wanted to check it out. Um, congratulations on releasing your book today. It's amazing. And, and, uh, Thank you. I think what you just said um, just now is what makes you super special to me and, um, and what makes these characters, I think, relatable as well. So... Um, you know, it's pretty important, but I, my, I wasn't going to talk about that, but it just made me think of that. Um, about the Westies, what do the Westies sound like? Well, the Westies are rococious, and they're unheeding, and they're rock and roll, and they're, they have a snarl to them, because you might recognize some of the brilliancy in there. Okay. Um, they're sort of characters that, oh God, they sound a lot like... Duff McKagan slash and Puffy from Faith No More. It's so uncanny. Puffy. You would not believe it. <laughs> oh, okay, cool. How, how do we get to hear them? Oh, okay. Um, you can get, uh, well, there's a limited edition of the vinyl. So it's a seven inch vinyl of the Westies from the band, from the book that you get to follow along. And there's two songs, of never released before tunes with these outstanding rockers that I think you'll really enjoy. The Westies. The Westies. The Westies. And, okay, do they have wink, representation? Wink. Oh, <laughs> yes. Um, okay. hmm. They do, but you have to read the book to find out more. Okay, gotcha. All right, <laughs> well, congratulations. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Hi, Susan. Um, all right, mm. so I... <laughs> Hi, Jay. How you doing? Damn. Uh, uh, all right. I'm going to focus on her, man. I get, you know, what, are you, what are you doing to me here? Uh, so, uh, Susan, I've always heard that uh, an author writes what they know. And I know this is a novel. It's not an autobiography. But uh, you know, I think everybody, there's a lot of interest in you and your family. And over the coming months, as people get a chance to read the book, I think I know I want to know. A lot of people are going to ask you which story is true, probably specifically the crazier stories. Have you given any thought to uh, whether you're going to whether you're going to admit to people, share with people what is the real wildness and what is just purely imagination? And you're, you're beautiful. Yeah. Um, well, <laughs> it's there are definitely some semblances of true stories because write what you know about, and then you might be able to pull them apart by reading the book. I think that's part of the fun, is the who's who, and oh, is this maybe real? Because I read about it. I remember hearing something publicly already before. <laughs> and so you'll know more insight and detail. Um, and then there's definitely some fun pranks in there that were true. I'm giving you some nuggets here. You heard it here, because I. I didn't think I was going to do this, but... <laughs> I tried not to. It's very difficult. There might be some high fashion show, behind the scenes, runway, catwalk moments that really happen or not, allegedly. <laughs> 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 so, um, yeah, it's, it's a Romana Clef, so you're going to have fun figuring out what's what and who's who. And if you're a true, maybe, GNR fan or modeling, like 90s modeling all world it, fan, you, I bet you're going to figure some, sleuth some out. For sure. Right, well, thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> thank you. Hi, Susan. Congratulations, Hi. and thanks for being here. Oh, um, thanks. Just a super quick Good question. Um, if or when The Velvet Rose gets made into a film, what is the one song from the 90s that you'd want as the movie's theme song? Oh, good question. Very good question. One? <laughs> <laughs> what comes to your mind first off, Miss J? Like, what was one of your favorite 90s songs? Anything? It's, it's, 95? 
Shout out to Sandy. What it's, were we walking to in the it's, it's catwalks? Your it's, it's your movie, baby. Oh, it's not okay. mine. <laughs> I'm wearing uh, my director for my documentary just sitting over here. Third row, baby. We think about that for us, so. Okay, all right. Ooh, 90s, 95. I'm going to back to, <laughs> I'm gonna have to go back to the shows. I'm going to have to go back to the shows I walked the runway and catwalks to. I have to think about that. We walked all kinds of stuff from In Excess. Remember Michael Hutchins' time? Yeah. And to, oh mm. gosh, we walked to, I remember at Carl's shows, he, would, he had the crystal method stuff before. Not crystal meth, crystal <laughs> method. Method. Id. Let's be clear. Yes. Okay. Oh, okay, yeah, that's, oh, thank you. Okay. Oh, yeah, or, well, of course the Westies, too, because they're already hit makers and made it, they get signed to a, you know, MF deal at MCA. Don't forget. <laughs> um, gosh, there's so many. Oh my gosh, Madonna, take a bow. That would be good too. No, okay, maybe. <laughs> oh, there's, okay. Um, wow, there's a lot. Songs? Okay, I don't know, sorry, I'm taking too long. <laughs> I mean, I li actually I'm making a Spotify list because there's, a, there's basically a soundtrack playing in the background of the storyline in this book. And there's too many to list, from Leon Russell to Billie Holiday to Guns N' Roses to um, Billy Idol, Blondie. Um, what about some old black, some old black, yeah, they, you know, bliss spirituals? Yes, we have. From the South. Oh yeah, we, we do. We have, um, yes. oh, okay, yes. yes. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, go there, baby. There Kinda. is a scene yeah. where they go uptown Praise to Charlie's. Charlie's. It's a jazz club mm -hmm. for Charlie Parker. Okay. So I can. We'll figure that one out, baby. Thank we'll, you. We'll, we'll, we'll figure that, that one out. Scene. Sorry, can I, can I ask a question? Yes, please. Uh, Hi. Can you please tell me how you met Jake? Oh. Do you want to tell this, Jay? No, he or asked do you, you the question, not me. Okay. Okay. We might have different stories. <laughs> We're just kidding. <laughs> different remembrances. But um, in a nutshell, we met in Paris, France. And um, I, along with Claudia Mason, who's here to nurse, I don't know if she's, oh, she just left, but she had to go to dinner, but luckily she came. Um, she's a brilliant fellow model, you probably know who she is anyway, but um, it was Megan Douglas, Claudia Mason, and myself, and we would, and Heather Stewart White, and we would, we were doing all these big runway shows, you know, Chanel, and Saint Laurent, and Dior, and just all the incredible designers, and so our agent, Gerald at uh, Elite at the time, um, it's like, you girls, you need to really walk your best walk. So he, God bless him, put us in touch because I don't think I'd probably have walked one show without his help um, because, so going back to that, then we went to a Paris apartment and we would just practice walking up and down the, the hallways with the wooden floors. I can still hear the wooden floors creaking and, and Miss J putting up with us and patiently instructing us how to have that savoir faire and confidence and, and with heels and with purse and with, and with not. And it sounds easy, you guys. It is not. Because while you're walking down that runway, you're having a whole complete conversation in your head. You know, look this way, keep your arm down, turn, show the jacket, take off the jacket, but slowly, delicately, et cetera, et cetera. So Jay is the pioneer in that and the, you know, king of that and oh, queen depends queen. on the day oh <laughs> queen depends sorry on the day queen. you know <laughs> sometimes i flip you know what anyway. i'm saying <laughs> okay the queen of that sorry my bad <laughs> and and then from there you know a, a beautiful timeless friendship happened and, and two babies. i'm so blessed 
because he's here for today girls. for me. Like he still puts up with me. It's amazing. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. But that's love. Baby. That's all, all unconditional. That's all unconditional love. And I know I can always depend on you and count on you for anything if I need anything, so which is also great. Um, and there you have it. I mean, all in a nutshell. You know what I would say, if you ain't hoeing, you ain't able. <laughs> 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 got to get it while you got it. Get it while you can. Yeah. Okay, guys, listen, um, I'm going to thank you all for putting up with me, but also for listening to her. Thank you, everybody. This star of the evening. <laughs> this room is kind of hot. And um, if you want your book signed, I'm getting out of the way. It's all about you. And do your thing, baby. Thank you, Miss J. You did a great job. You look fabulous. You're still the queen. Thank you, everybody. I really appreciate it. I didn't know if one person was going to show up, so I'm like, wow, holy crap. Okay, thanks. <laughs>